It's been half a month since the Green Bay Packers played, but it's game day, baby. Welcome in. It's the Pack a Day Podcast, your Monday edition. I'm Alex Grove from ESPN Madison, joined alongside not my usual partners, but the one and only Jacob Westendorf of Packer Report and Game on Wisconsin fame. Jacob, this game feels very odd to me, right? Yep. Because it's it's mid-December. It feels like this should have been such a big game. The reigning Super Bowl champions and the reigning number one seed in the NFC. But I don't know that it matters a ton. And, and I'll get into my optimistic spin on everything in a little bit because I do still have like a, a small dosage of optimism that the Packers can make the playoffs. I don't know why I do. I just do. Um, but this game just couldn't feel smaller to me. I, I'm not I'm not like very hyped up for a Monday night football game. Where are you at? Yeah, I'm in the same spot. It's a weird feeling. Baker Mayfield, the last time we saw him, just Oof. came on the field and was like didn't know names of players and was just kind of <laughs> chucking and ducking. And because the Raiders are the Raiders, it worked and they win. So you kind of have that going into this. The Packers, the last time we saw them, it took a valiant effort in the second half to beat a really bad Chicago Bears team. And there's like talks of positive momentum and stuff like that. Number one, I, I don't think momentum exists from one game to the next. But number two, I, I it's the Bears. So like Green Bay, I'm convinced with Aaron Rodgers could be 0 and 10. And Chicago could be 10 and 0 and Green Bay would win that game. Like that's just kind of the state of that quote unquote rivalry at this point. But you're right. At the beginning of the season, we circle this game and we're like, that could be a game that decides home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And you're kind of happy if you're a Packers fan, it's in Green Bay. Green Bay's kicked the crap out of the Rams, uh, what, two times uh, in the last three years. Uh, Sean McVay has yet to beat Matt LaFleur head to head. So that is something. Uh, What that means for Monday, I have no idea. And Then you look at this Rams. The Rams roster is depleted. Green Bay's roster is not very good. So we went from thinking this was a matchup of Super Bowl contenders to two of the most disappointing teams in the NFL. So it's hard to – I'm excited to see them play because it's been two weeks. But it's also like, man, what – you know, what's the – What's the situation? What does it matter? What is, you know, what is the outcome? What does all that stuff mean? So let me ask you this, because if the Packers win, and just to give you an idea of how awful this game is, what are the records? Four and nine and five and eight, if I'm not mistaken. Packers five and eight, Rams four and nine. So they have a combined nine wins on the season. And again, it's mid-December. But if the Packers win, they go to six and eight. and, And you need two things to happen, right? You need Seattle to lose one more game. They play Kansas City next week. And you need either Washington or New York, depending on the result of Sunday night's game. It looked like it was going to be the Giants as we record shortly after halftime. Um, But you need Washington to lose two of their final three. And you need to win out. But winning out is still a very, very far-fetched idea for me, Jacob, uh, given, given the team that we, as you just alluded to, right? Two weeks ago, we saw them struggle to beat Chicago. They needed 18 points in the fourth quarter in order to beat Chicago. So I'm not feeling very confident about this team going to South Florida next week on Christmas Day and beating Miami. But I don't know. You never know with an Aaron Rodgers-led team. I will say this. I would be willing to bet it is more likely that they lose the rest of their games than it is that they win them. For example, let's just kick this game out, okay? Yeah. Miami at Miami, that's a tough place to play. Green Bay's never really played that well in Florida for whatever reason. Miami's better. They've got all that speed. I can picture bombs flying all over the place to Tyreek. It's not hard to figure a scenario where Hill and Waddle both have huge games. And, uh, oh, yeah, Raheem Mostert plays for them, too. You might have heard of him. Um, (laughs) Yeah, there's that. Minnesota is not very good, I don't think, but they're better than this Packers team. Um, And they could still be playing for seeding. Um, especially after the the comeback win against Indianapolis. Uh, they're certainly playing for seeding at this point. So it's not like they'll have nothing to play for. They won't be playing whoever Kirk Cousins' backup is and no Justin Jefferson and all that stuff. So Minnesota's a better team than the Packers. And they could be playing a Lions team that's playing for their first playoff berth in a century, or at least it feels like it's been that long, the last game of the season. It almost like when we talk about this win-out scenario, it's almost like we're penciling in, oh, those are two home games. Those are two wins. Well, why? Green Bay lost to a crappy Jets team at home with Zach Wilson where they had less than 100 yards passing. I'm not making that number up. They've lost games that they've had. You theoretically should have no business losing. They went to overtime and had to go all the way to the limit with Bailey Zappi playing for the New England Patriots and a Patriots team that's not that good. That game was at home. Like the only time the Packers 
have looked like the part of a serious football team has when <laughs> has been when they played Chicago twice. And they didn't even look like that serious of a football team when they oh I take that back against the Cowboys. Certainly that game. Cowboys, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, like if they lose tomorrow night or tonight, tomorrow as we record here, but if they lose tonight against the Rams, I can certainly see them losing those last three games. And I don't think tonight's game's a gimme. And that's more of a byproduct of what I think this Packers team is. Because I've like we've broken it down, right? The Packers are five and eight. Two of those wins are against the Bears. One of them is against a bad Tampa Bay team. One of them is against a not very good New England team, and it took all of overtime to do that. And they have a good win against the Cowboys team that I think is capable of beating anybody and also losing to anybody. Like you could tell me today. Saw that on Sunday, yeah. Yeah, you could tell me today the Dallas Cowboys are playing in the Super Bowl, and I would be like, yeah, that could happen. And then you could also tell me they lost Wild Card Weekend to the 7-10 and 10 Tampa Bay Bucks, And I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense too. So I just, this Packers team's not any good. And that's really what this boils down to. Maybe they, you know, hit, hit some stride here at the end of the year, but it's hard to envision that they're just not particularly good. No, it's not a very good football team, but, but if, if the indication of of week 15 in the NFL is anything right, maybe it is the Packers rattle off 10 in a row or whatever it would have to be to, to win the Super Bowl. I don't know. It's just, it's been a really wacky season. Obviously I'm saying that tongue in cheek. When it comes to tonight's game, though, what what are you looking for, right? Is there anything this team can do that that says, hey, Jacob, we're actually pretty good. That that late bye week was very beneficial for us, right? When you get a guy like, what is it, the wide receiver room healthy for the first time since week two. Like, that's an intriguing storyline to me. How, how do Watson and Dobbs coexist uh, after both of their early season breakouts? I'm curious to see that. But I, I don't know that they can do anything offensively that will make me think, Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that looks like a Super Bowl team. If they can do that for four weeks defensively, they can't do anything that makes me think this is a good defense, right? Like they hold, if they hold Baker Mayfield in week two of being a Los Angeles Ram to 14 points, I'm not going to sit here and act like they're going to do the same thing to Miami on Christmas day on a short week. So I, I don't know that I can learn a ton about this team or gain a bunch of confidence about uh, for this team through anything they do tonight, but maybe I'm being pessimistic. Uh, the only thing I can really think of is if the offense can finally start to look like that well-oiled machine. And you've seen glimpses of that, uh, where the offense has started to look better as the games have gone on. But again, I know they scored 28 points against Chicago, but number one, it's, it's Chicago. So, I mean, how good are they? Blah, blah, blah. Number two, it's kind of a fool's gold, 28 points. Cause it was 20 to 19 until the last minute of the game when Watson breaks that big and it all counts. I understand that, but through the normal game flow of the game green, like if Watson had fallen down, green Bay would have just run out the clock and the final would have been 20 to 19. Um, So you throw in a two point conversion there. It looks like 28 points and it's, and it's good. That's really the answer to me though, is they have their two backs should theoretically be healthy. They have their offensive line minus David Bakhtiari. Everyone else is healthy, which is a good thing objectively. Aaron Rodgers, two weeks removed from a thumb injury and a rib injury that has clearly bothered him. To what extent? You can certainly ask that, but it's something that's clearly bothered him all season. But yeah, that's, I think your question about the receiver room, if you want a reason for optimism for the rest of this season and going into next season, it's Christian Watson looks like a star and he certainly does. Romeo Dobbs looks like the solid rock solid player that he was before he got injured and he led the team in targets and all that good stuff. If you can piece together a receiver room for 2023 that includes Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs. And then if, if Aaron Rodgers is back, Randall Cobb will probably be back and he's still a useful, pretty good player. He can do some nice things for you. Samari Toure has had like, I get a little frustrated when people say like he's flashed because it's been like two plays, but I mean, still those exist for a seventh round rookie, objectively a very good, thing for that to happen throw in a veteran who's got some use to him as opposed to what sammy watkins has given this team which is you know next to nothing and maybe a second round draft pick or something like that if the packers were to do that now you're talking about a position group that could go from you know what some radio analysts call the worst receiver room in the league to a legitimate strength and are you referring to me when you say that no 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 no, okay because i did say that in all honesty i did say that yeah I mean, you were probably wrong at the time, but I don't need to go back and rehash all that, but who knows? Either way, get a legitimate veteran to go with those two guys making that year two jump. And then 
it almost, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter, but like regardless of who the quarterback is, whether it's Rogers or Jordan Love, and that's an off season conversation, you feel good about those guys being able to make plays for a team that, I mean, frankly, Andy Herman did an episode on this weeks ago. The Packers are short on playmakers. Like they just yeah. don't have a lot. And that's on both sides of the ball. They just don't have a lot of guys that make a lot of big plays. So I'm interested to see, you know, can Watson clear something out and have Rodgers hit Dobbs on a on an intermediate route and it gets easier because Watson was there. There's a lot to see on the offensive side of the ball. But yeah, if, if Green Bay is going to make some magic run and win the Super Bowl, the path is Rodgers hitting some supernova run like he did in 2016. The offense yep. being this well-oiled machine and the defense getting a couple of turnovers, which we've seen over the years. That's just not a sustainable way to play defense and win a championship in the playoffs. Like if your defense is like, well, we either get turnovers or they score points. That sounds a lot like 2011. That season didn't end well. So no, that's what I'm looking at is, is those guys. And can they, can they get enough uh, traction in the ground game? And can they run um, some stuff on offense that just makes them look like a good unit? I don't, they don't even need to be great, but they've looked bad for most of the year. So look good. No, I mean, in order to make a run, but also you, everything needs to start tonight, right? I mean, you you need to really find some confidence offensively, as you alluded to, right? Like this offense needs to start rolling. Um, and Rogers alluded to that last week when he, when he met with the media. He said, you know, we need to score points uh, and to win football games. We need to be over 30 points every week. And I I feel like this is an offense now that, that can maybe do that, right? Get to that 30-point threshold. I mean, this is not the the 2020 team that was doing it every week, right? This is a 2022 team that's only done it a handful of times. But when it comes to, you know, this part of the season, we all projected, or at least I think a lot of us projected prior to the season, yeah, there's going to be some growing pains for this offense, but hopefully that last four-game stretch is where they hit their stride, they figure it out, one or two of those rookies come along, Alan Lazard, makes a huge jump, which he hasn't, but he's still reliable. He's still a very good wide receiver. Uh, I, I don't know, Jacob, it's, it's, it's hard, but like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep my fan hat on and, and be optimistic and, you know, say, all right, you know, this, this is it. We've seen Aaron Rodgers do this before. And, and you mentioned a, a couple of the seasons where they've needed miraculous runs at the end of the year, but I don't know this, this team just doesn't feel like it has that it factor that maybe those teams did, but I don't know. Maybe we'll see something tonight that 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 proves us wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying, this also is trying to be optimistic. <laughs> they also don't have the talent those teams did. Like that Absolutely 2013 not. team was decimated by injuries. I understand that. But still had Jordy at the peak of his powers. Still had Randall Cobb coming back that season at the peak of his powers. They had players like that. The 2016 team. Jordy Nelson, again, kind of a resurgence here. Randall Cobb was still reliable. They found a bit of something with that running game with Ty Montgomery that year. And, of course, Devontae Adams was starting to emerge and come into his own. What the Packers have right now is Al Lazard's a nice player. Um, Randall Cobb is, is an older, nice player against some safety blankets type stuff. But, again, there's one receiver on this roster that you feel like if he touches the ball that he can make a big, big play for you, and it's Christian Watson. And that's not a – bad thing like but they need more guys that can do stuff like that and they just yeah. they don't have it for whatever reason they're built i know everybody on the internet shouts they need to run the ball every single week and every single play essentially but like they're not really built to do that other than they have two running backs like their offensive line that's going to start tonight zach tom's not a road grader he's small he's an undersized offensive tackle elton's a good run blocker Myers is inconsistent. John Runyon's not a very good run blocker. And Yost Nyman's kind of undersized on that too. So like, they're not really built to just line up and ram it down your throat 30 times a game. They can't really do that uh, based on who they have up front. They just have two really good running backs, but the, it's kind of a weird, it's a weird spot where like the way that the Packers could, should whatever play offense, which is through their running game and how they're built, they, they don't coincide. And I think that it all stems back to, kind of getting caught with their pants down about the Devontae Adams situation, which I'm sure has been talked about a million times. We don't need to go back over that, but that's the hard part with this offense is they're not overly talented. They have virtually zero production from the tight end position and they don't have it. Like the offense the last two years has been Devonte and then whatever else you could find. Well, that works really well when it's Devonte. you know, Christian Watson, as great as he's been over the last couple of weeks, he's not going to be Devonte Adams. Like Devontae is the best receiver in football still. And 
Watson just isn't good. Maybe he will be one day, but he's not that right now. And they're just not very talented. And they have a quarterback who's compromised, maybe declining, and probably a guy they should have traded 10 months ago. Ooh, that's spicy. I wish the Packers didn't play today so we could dive deeper into that. January 23rd, 2022. I wrote that exact article for Packer Report. So it is a original take that I stand by from that particular day. You're a crazy person. I, I disagree with that, but I, I like the passion. All right, let's do this. Uh, player on the Packers offense you're most curious to watch Monday night assume. Uh, Well, Aaron Jones is on my fantasy team, but I don't need him to score any points for me to win. Thankfully, I've already moved on. Shout out. What Vince. a humble uh, brag. <laughs> um, hopefully, it's the first of two playoff losses one of my teams is giving him on this particular. Uh, hey, Jacob, I, I just I just want to give you my, my two rules of, uh, of podcasting and radio. Are you ready for that? Sure. Nobody Num- cares about my fantasy team. <laughs> That's one. Number two is nobody cares about your sex life. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. So we're not worried <laughs> okay, about that. Okay, good. Or the lack yeah. thereof. But anyway, yeah. go on. Yeah, we'll, I'm we'll, married. We'll, it doesn't exist. Saying. So anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need Aaron Jones to do anything for me tonight. So, I mean, the easy answer is Romeo Dobbs. He was the guy, he was the team's, you know, leading receiver in targets for a month, you know, and, and when you look at the way the Rams might play defense, they do move Jalen Ramsey around and kind of do some matchup stuff. I'm curious how they do that now that Devonte Adams isn't around. Does Christian Watson get the Jalen Ramsey treatment? How does he do with that? Like, there's there's a lot of interesting like little wrinkles because of the unknowns and the Packers. Like, they should be able to block this front, especially now that Aaron Donald's not playing and Aaron Donald just unlocks so many things for them. But yeah, that's where I start with Dobbs just because I think that Ramsey might get the Watson assignment. And if he does, then Watson will still be able to, I think, make a play or two against him. But I think Dobbs is going to have an opportunity to make some plays. And I'm interested just kind of in general, how does that snap distribution work? Because they found a nice little rhythm with Watson's emergence. It's been him, Lazard, and Cobb, and Sammy Watkins just kind of gets nailed to the bench, which isn't a bad thing. No. Um, now it's, you know, if Dobbs is on the field, who's he taking reps from? Um, I personally would like to see either Lazard or Watson in the slot. I like those big, tall slot receivers to make those plays over the middle of the field. If the quarterback will actually throw it, there is another story, but yeah, my answer is Dobbs. He's been gone for a month and a half, uh, maybe a little bit less than that, but yeah, interested to see Kenny bounce back from an injury as a guy. And you know, this is a guy you're talking about for building something towards 2023. There are things about this Packers team. Once they officially get eliminated, and that I, I anticipate happening in the next two weeks, that still matter. And Dobbs and Watson specifically, those two guys are things that matter down the stretch. Yeah, obviously, there the, are the things that matter for next year and, and years going forward, right? But I, I'm just curious to see if they can help this run, right? You're you're giving up hope. You say either this year, or this week, or next week. I think we might get into the new year before we say the Packers are out. I don't know. Maybe get a little frisky. Wait till the new year. But um, I will say this. When, when it comes to Christian Watson, you take Dobbs. I'll take Watson then. Uh, if he does get that Ramsey uh, you know, matchup, I'm curious to see how he operates against an all-pro DB like him. But secondly, to see if he can continue this this crazy run he's been on the last four games for the Packers. Right? Is it eight touchdowns in four weeks or, or what have you? It's an insane run. It's not done by a rookie ever in the National Football League, uh, at least this consistently in a four-week stretch. See if he can get a, a, another touchdown. See if he can get two more, right? And just to see how he operates after the week off, too. Does that take his Does that take his game to the next level? I don't know. So I, I'm intrigued to see what b- both of those rookie wideouts bring, uh, given the expectations for them, too, by the way. I would say they're both out playing them. At least when Dobbs is on the field, that would be the case. So uh, happy to see that going forward. Uh, defensively, what position group uh, are you keeping an eye on Monday night? Pass rushers, because yep. Green Bay's pass rush has been anemic since Rashawn Gary exited for the season. Unfortunately, that was a that was the injury where, like, after they beat Dallas, Ross Uglum and I kept pointing to it and just being like, even if they do get rolling on offense, like after this performance, and they really haven't. They scored 17 points against Tennessee. I mentioned the garbage time, not garbage time, but you know, late touchdown against Chicago. Yep to win that game. They scored 33 against Philadelphia, which was objectively very, a nice thing. Um, I didn't, I didn't think the Packers could score that many points against a good Eagles defense, but um, you know, if we thought if the offense could really get rolling, it's just Gary's their best player on defense. And now Kingsley and Igbari, he's like the guy that we do this every year where a guy does well in like limited snaps or, 
just like forced action. And we're like, like Kamal Martin was the guy I remember in 2020. Everyone was like, Oh, I can't wait to see more yes. Kamal Martin. Goody really hit a home run on that fifth round pick. I was like, guys, he played 200 snaps. Like Kingsley and Igbar is going to play two more than 200 snaps. He's got some nice numbers and that's all well and good, but he's kind of, he's probably a rotational pass rusher. And this edge unit, like if Preston Smith becomes a cap casualty, this pass rush unit is a mess going into next year. Cause I don't it know. It already is, is right. It, it already is. <laughs> right. And it is with him. So it gets worse obviously without him. And next year is, is odd year number Preston Smith. So you want that player <laughs> on your team. Um, but green Bay, like, I've, I've joked this often already is, you know, with it being draft season coming up here, whenever, you know, if green Bay gets eliminated or goes to the super bowl, I look forward to months of, it'll be like the same four players, Quentin Johnston from TCU, Jordan Addison from USC, Michael Mayer from Notre Dame. Those would be like the big three and Peter Skaronsky maybe, but really just those three guys um, as receivers and tight ends, green Bay is going to pick in the first round. And then they'll pick a defensive lineman or an edge rusher because that's absolutely what they should do because those two units absolutely stink. And the outlook going forward absolutely stinks. But this Rams offensive line is a makeshift unit and they've stunk all year. Like Matthew Stafford is contemplating retiring because he doesn't trust those guys to not get him killed. Like, <laughs> and Baker Mayfield is, is as tough as they come. You know, say what you will about Baker Mayfield, but his toughness is not something I think you can question. But this team should be able, Kenny Clark. Man, got to see in the backfield. Devontae Wyatt, do I get some more snaps from him? Can they get him? And I said edge rushers, I hope so. But, but Enig Barre, Preston Smith, can you guys like – I'm not asking you Enig Barre to take over a game because I don't think – I don't know if he's capable of doing that. I don't want to put too much pressure on him to do that. But can I get like a one-and-a-half sack performance from each of those guys and then some additional pressures and all that stuff? Can one of the backups, Jonathan Garvin, Ladarius Hamilton, Justin Hollins, you know, whoever it is that they have up for game day, can those guys do something? Because, you know, defense to me, you guys watch the Philadelphia Eagles, and I don't mean to keep pointing them every chance I get, but I love the way that team is built. They legitimately, their, their backup front four is better than Green Bay's starting front four. And I am not exaggerating when I say that's at least a possibility. They are going to have four players with 10 or more sacks this season. Now I'm not saying the Packers have to have that, but I feel like they've gone the last couple, the, the first year of Patton or the second year of Patton, the first year of Gutekunst and LaFleur, mm -hmm. well, just LaFleur when they had both Smith brothers, Fackrell and Rashawn Gary, that's when you were like the first time you could say like, hey, they could legitimately kind of rotate. Fat roll was coming off 10 sack year that year, of course. So they could legitimately like rotate these guys in and out. Green Bay can't do that. And it almost felt like their plan for the edge room this year was, well, we got our two studs with Preston and Rashawn, and then we drafted a kid in the fifth round, and we're going to hope one of the undrafted free agent seventh round guys does something, and they didn't. Like they need to restock that entire front unit. And I think Enig Barre is one of the guys definitely – to keep an eye on just because you want him to be a rotational player. Justin Hollins, can you be a rotational player in somewhat long term? And just give the Packer because like even last year when Z was hurt and they had yeah. Preston and Gary, they would rotate in like Tipa and, and Jonathan Garvin or whoever the other guys were before Whitney Merciless got here and then unfortunately injured. It's just like those pass rush reps were wasted reps because they're not breathing on the quarterback. And the Packers, there's way too many reps of the quarterback, Justin Fields had a week and a half to throw the football. Now, some of that might've been by design because they want to keep him in the pocket and make him a pocket passer, but the Packers pass rush stinks. And if green Bay is going to build this unit to be this alleged championship unit, um, you know, just changing the coordinator is not going to do that. They need some nail spitters and some nasty mean eating buddy. Ryan quarterback must go down and must go down hard kind of guys and they don't have those right now so hopefully they start seeing some emergence for something like that tonight yeah the Packers uh ranked 29th in the NFL with 24 sacks on the season uh which is uh, not good 29th would be fourth last uh, and I believe seven of them belong to Rashawn Gary so six of seven them. six, six. Of so 18 a, qu sacks. a quarter of them yeah, yeah 18 sacks that don't belong to a player that's been gone for most of the season yeah the last game he played in was the first week of November so we're talking a month and a half he's been off the field and he still leads the team in sacks so it's certainly a group that struggled, but that whole defensive, uh, actually, end sentence. The whole defense has struggled uh, the entire season. Joe Barry is uh, 
He's gone, right? Uh, you're pretty confident he's fired after this year. Just real yeah, quick. somebody somebody gets fired when a team doesn't meet expectations. But like I just mentioned, changing the coordinator, like Jim Leonard, and I know that's the guy that everybody pines for because he was in Madison for as long as he was. Jim Leonard can come here and that'll be fine. But better coordinator, it's not going to matter if Ladarius Hamilton and Tipa Nalia are still rushing the passer. If Dean Lowry is still taking on double teams, like the Packers have – more personnel issues than I think we gave credit for, especially on defense coming into the season. Uh, And I think there will be more of those too, because like, I don't think Adrian Amos is coming back. Darnell Savage has been a disaster. So you're talking about maybe two starting safeties that they need. If you move Rasul Douglas to safety in theory, that opens up the nickel corner type spots as well. And what they have two defensive linemen under contract for 2023 and it's, Kenny Clark and Devontae Wyatt and Wyatt never plays. So I don't know, like you picked a guy 28th overall and you're not getting as much out of guys like Jaron Reed and especially Dean Lowry and Wyatt can't get on the field. So cool. Fire the coordinator. And that'll be met with, you know, happiness on the Twitter timeline because Twitter loves to see everyone ever get fired. But I don't think that's a fix all. I don't care if buddy Ryan or name whoever you think the greatest defensive coordinator ever is, is on this team. It's not going to be, a great defense with this group. No, you're, you're right about that. Uh, and this is not me breaking news. I just, I don't think Jim Leonard's going to the NFL. I, I'll just, I'll just tell you that right now, but I don't uh, either. We'll see. I mean, he turned down the job two years ago. He interviewed for it. So I don't know, maybe, maybe he's had a change of heart now that he's, he won't be with the Badgers, but anyway, uh, that's, that's a conversation for another day. All right, let's end with this, Jacob. Uh, I want to score prediction and how you think this game is going to play out. I'll start though. I, I think, the Packers get over 30 points, but they allow almost that as well to Baker Mayfield. I'll take the Packers 31 to 24 over the Rams. I think we're going to have a whole lot of points at Lambeau Field on a, on a chilly Monday night. I, I think Romeo Dobbs plays a, plays a solid role in this, in this win. I, I think, you know, he'll be back. He'll have a resurgence. And shoot, he'll have a touchdown. How's that for a prediction? Romeo Dobbs touchdown. It is return, but I think it's a, I think it's an Aaron Jones game as well. I think this is grounded, Pat. It's a cold December night at Lambeau Field. Let's not make the same mistake we made against San Francisco in the playoffs last year and uh, utilize our backfield. Let's take the Packers Monday night football, 31-24, keeping the playoff hopes alive. Man, that is wild because the over-under for this game is 39 and a half. So you have the over absolutely smashing. Oh, yeah. Always take the over. Okay. Well, I'm actually taking the under because I think wow. Baker – Yeah, I think Baker will turn the ball over enough. And like I said, t- Green Bay's offense is clunky. Like, they could score 30. They could also only score 17. So, you know, I don't I don't know what to expect. The, the Rams' run defense has been good. Aaron Donald's not playing, but they've been a good group against the run. And when Green Bay hasn't been able to run it, they've really struggled. Like even, yeah. you know, Chicago, they ran the ball well enough. They ran the ball really well against um, Dallas, which was their best offensive game of the season. They just struggle, and they struggle to score points. I think they make a lot of stupid mistakes. They turn the ball over. They drop the ball. Um I think Baker will throw enough back to Green Bay to like make these things possible. But I'm going 21-17. I like Green Bay to win. It's a home game. Uh, Lafleur, like I said, is undefeated against Sean McVay. We just need to get him to figure out how to beat Kyle Shanahan in a game that matters. But unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet. But I don't know. The that Rams are such aren't a good. Rams Packers score, Jacob. 21-17. It's like a little too close for comfort. It's going to be an ugly game throughout. And we'll get a late Aaron Rodgers to, to Romeo Dobbs touchdown or Christian Watson touchdown with four minutes left in the fourth quarter. It would have to be four seconds because I have no faith in this defense to come up with the stop That's if fair. Baker's doing two minutes. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I think the defense gets a couple turnovers, but I think the Packers give a couple back on their own. I just I don't know. You know, maybe that maybe the bye week is something that that has helped galvanize this team after coming off of a win. And you know, the Packers. They don't listen to idiots like us that say they're cooked and done and everything like that. They certainly believe they're winning these last four games, getting in the playoffs and going to the Super Bowl. Um, that's just that's just how teams are wired. But I don't know. I mean, I just until I see it, I can't I can't count on something like that happening. So I'll go Packers 21, Rams 17. Um, and I think it'll be one of those games that you kind of realize, especially late in the second half as it gets colder and nastier and just bone chilling, like AJ Dillon just grinding out that clock against a team that doesn't want to tackle him. They're not making the playoffs. So they're kind of like in business decision mode with some of that stuff. So yeah, I'll take green Bay, but I, like I mentioned earlier, I would not be surprised 
either way with how this game goes. Hey, you're back on the Pack of Day podcast audio side tomorrow, Jacob, uh, and uh, I hope you. I hope your tune is completely changed. You're gonna and jump video off. for that matter. So you oh. get this ugly mug two days in a row. Oh, Sorry. lucky, lucky, lucky! Everybody uh, watching us. Well, I'll say this uh, before we wrap up: you're gonna change your tune tomorrow. You're gonna come in saying, "Wow, the Packers scored 30 points. They look like a playoff team." Miami doesn't have a shot against this defense. Chair Alexander of old has come back. He's going to shut down Jalen Waddle and uh, Tyree Kill at the same time. That's what you're going to say tomorrow. I'm just predicting it. Okay. Well, predictions are made to be wrong, I guess. So I can't. If he, if, uh, if Jair Alexander shuts down Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle at the same time as you predicted, I would say. Put him in the Hall of Fame. I would say put him in the Hall of Fame. He doesn't have to play another snap. Oh, I agree with you on that. All right, that does it for the Monday edition of the Pack-A-Day podcast. If you're with us on YouTube, drop a score prediction in the comments. Let us know what you're keeping an eye on uh, for this Monday night matchup between the Rams and the Packers on ESPN. You can find Jacob on Twitter, at Jacob Westendorf, for all of his great work, at Packer Report and Game on Wisconsin. You can find me on Twitter, at Alex underscore Strofe. Until next time, which I think will be in the new year, go Pack Go!